so happy to be joined by Yuji Koreikado. He's the producer of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Yep. Congratulations on the game. Um, so obviously it is a much different game in the Metal Gear anthology than what we've seen before, obviously with Solid Snake and there being stealth. What is so essential though that you have to keep in the game so it really fits within the, the Metal Gear universe? As far as Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, the gameplay we always wanted the action. So when we look at the action, the genre is completely different. That was all planned. Now in order to keep it Metal Gear-esque, uh, we felt that we needed to definitely look over the timeline and how it fits into the saga. So you look at Metal Gear Solid 4, it completed and concluded uh, Snake's story and the Patriots were demolished. Now with that, everyone wants to know what happens after this. And that's where Raiden's story com uh, comes in. And um, from there, Raiden's story begins and uh, creates another branch to the Metal Gear saga. Um, if, if, if you wouldn't mind, what is kind of the overarching story? In, in, in what I've played, it's very clear that while in essence the business of war has kind of ended, there's still people that want to profit from, from warmongering and, and then that's where it starts immediately. But, but um, what's, what's kind of the overarching theme of what's happening in, in, in Revengeance? So after Metal Gear Solid 4 and the demolishing of the Patriots and the SOP system, the information is all gone. So what happens now is freedom. Everyone has freedom and what happens to PMCs in war once everyone has their own freedom and no information in hand? Now as far as theme goes, each character and even bosses have their own morals and why they fight for uh, their own freedom and why they act as if they do in the game. Now they fight for a reason, even though they're cyborgs, they have a reason they're cyborgs, they have a reason why they're fighting for uh, whatever side they're on. And uh, from there, uh, it's a battle between morals and will. And that's the theme that we have built up in this game. Obviously, it is a world of guns, but Raiden and, and many of the enemies in the cyborgs he fights um, have swords, which is a, a far more ancient form of, of warfare. I'm, I'm just sort of curious how you guys sort of approached bringing both old styles of combat into a very futuristic setting. Well, growing up in Japan and uh, being a Japanese, um, playing with the blade and looking at the blade, there's something about it that um, you know tickles us about it. And um, with that said, uh, we didn't choose the uh, blade as a choice because it it resembles our, um, I guess, Japanese side. It was more about because it looks cool. Now, <laughs> it's as simple as that. And um, when we look at it, the blade and um, as a cyborg, you need to cut through enemies in order to defeat them. And just using guns itself um, wouldn't really uh, damage the cyborg. So in order to completely demolish them, the blade was the weapon of choice. And uh, and ultimately, the the rule was that it had to look cool. So the blade came into choice. But one thing though it does bring out is that it's very, very, very fast. And I'm curious what the challenges were and be able to have that very quick visceral combat and not have it sort of get out of control so the player won't be able to sort of keep up with it. When we look over the action, this is something that Platinum Games was looking over, the game design of the uh, game, and um, this is something they're very good at. The balance of action, they have a long list of games that they've worked on uh, in regards to action games, and um, they've been world-renowned world about the action genre. Now, for Rising, when they took over the project, uh, as far as the game design goes, um, <laughs> when they are asking about the game design and balance, they, they pretty much have said that, you know, no need for that. That's something very good at. And uh, from Kojima Productions, never once did we ask for balance because they already had that in mind. All their studio staff are veterans that have been working on action games forever. And uh, that's something that never really crossed our minds. Um, no. You do have a sword, you're slicing through a bunch of other people, but there still are many Metal Gear qualities. You can still um, hide as an oil drum <laughs> in this case, and you, you can stealth your way through the games. How, how dynamic are the opportunities in handling the combat situations? So in order to uh, increase the variety and the options for the players, uh, we included stealth, as well as additional weapons and unique weapons. Now, um, this is not just for uh, the story or anything about Metal Gear, the saga, but uh, this was that for the users. Now, after playing so much action and cutting through things, to a point it gets dull. So we wanted to create options for the users where they can go through stealth, um, do the stealth kills, and uh, use different weapons, the unique weapons they gather throughout the, the story mode, and uh, use those and create different combos to further enjoy the game. 
that congratulations on the game and thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the game and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is coming out on February 19th. Of course, we'll have a review then and we're going to have some coverage leading up to it. The best way to find out is to subscribe. Go to youtube.com slash rev3games. You can also go to iTunes and of course, you can go to revision3.com.